Now that the S21 has been announced, it begs the question, is the S20 FE fan edition worth considering? Or actually, is the S21 really just a disguised fan edition flagship now for 2021? Well, it looks like we're going to have some time to discuss and go through this with the S21 versus the S20 fan edition. A disguised fan edition phone? Hmm. Let's go. Hi, Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy videos like this and you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS to Tech Lover Squad so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. Now, as of this recording, the S21 has been announced and it's on pre-order but yet to be released to the public for proper hands-on. And when it comes to the actual S20 FE, I've been using it for a while since release date and that's a big thank you to Vodafone UK for supplying the S20 FE for testing and review. There will be links in the description below for all the latest deals that you'll find on Vodafone phone UK for the S20 FE, particularly the 5G model that I've been using. But yeah, definitely stick around because I still want to give my thoughts and the initial impressions from the outside looking in on both these devices because it's kind of looking very suspect with a lot of comments that I've been getting from the previous comparison videos on why it probably is a disguised fan edition phone for 2021. Let's start with the design. And both the design are actually very similar than before when you compare it. But actually, yeah, the final appearance is slightly different enough for you to notice when it comes to both. Now, both the S21 and the S21 FE are using an aluminium frame with now a plastic or what Samsung are calling a glastic back which is Loki is a downgrade from before compared to the S20 for the S21 compared to what we had previously with the S20 so that's something to consider but at the front you are getting the latest Corning Gorilla Glass Victors which you are not getting on the S20 FE. The S20 FE is actually using Corning Gorilla Glass 3. What I'm definitely liking is the amount of colors that are offered on both the S21 and the S21 FE and also the overall design at the back of the S21 with how distinctive the camera module look with how it blends into the frame of the phone. Now when it comes to the S21 it does come in phantom grey, phantom white, phantom violet and phantom pink. Damn you phantoms. <laughs> S20 FE does come in six different colours. Cloud lavender, cloud mint, cloud navy, cloud white, cloud red, cloud orange and damn boy that's a lot of cloud now the s21 is a nice sized handset sitting in that 6.2 inch footprint size which i'm definitely eager to see how it handles because i feel like you know it's going to handle really well versus that 6.5 inch that you'll find on the s20 fe which still handles great but definitely if size is something that you are considering for a more compact handling importantly it might look like the s21 will be potentially the one to consider now look in terms of the design definitely there is more character to that s21 with how that rear camera is just so distinctive and the way it blends into the metal frame of the body this is something i am definitely eager to you know let's just see live in action man it looks good now when it comes to the display both these devices on paper they're looking very similar way more similar than i expected it to be firstly s21 we are getting a 6.2 inch full high definition plus dynamic AMOLED display with 120 hertz high refresh rate for the first time ever since the S5, the Galaxy S5, there is no quad high definition plus option even capped at 60 hertz like what we were getting last year. On top of that, you do get a max peak brightness of 1300 nits in that infinity old center hole punch display design. Now, also what's great about it is that refresh rate on there is adaptive and variable, which goes in between 48 hertz all the way up to 120 hertz, which is definitely gonna help with the overall efficiency of the display panel. Now, when it comes to the S20 FE, you are also still getting a full high definition plus AMOLED display with 120 hertz refresh rate on a flat display, just like what you get on the S21. So this is something that we've come to know and experience with the 6.5 inch size of what you're getting on the S20 FE, but that refresh rate is not adaptive and it's not as bright, but it still does, got, you know, does get plenty bright with around a thousand nits peak brightness from what I know. Now for the screen size on the S21, I don't think it's gonna be much of a problem for the fact that they've actually moved down to a full high definition plus display. I'm gonna be very honest. At that screen size, I'm not worried for it, but it still low key does feel like a bummer that you're not getting that quad high definition plus option that we've known to have since the Galaxy S6 for many years now. Now, when it comes to the specs, performance and the battery, this part especially is definitely looking good for the S21, which is packing either the latest Snapdragon 888 or the Exynos 2100 built on that five nanometer process with 5G, eight gigabytes of RAM with no micro SD card support for the first time in a long while, 128 and also 256 gigabytes 
gigabytes of storage with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery that supports 25 watt wire charging, 15 watt wireless charging, and also that wireless power share. Now, when you compare that to the S20 FE, it is packing either the Snapdragon 865 for the 5G model or that ill-fated Exynos 990 for the 4G model, avoid six gigabytes of ram or eight gigabytes of ram 128 gigabytes of storage or 256 gigabytes of storage with guess what micro sd card support and a massive 4500 milliamp hour battery that supports the same 25 watt charging when it comes to the wire 15 watt wireless charging and wireless power share as well now this is where the lines are blurred and it's not all that straightforward because look i've said it before man i really don't care much for the micro sd card slot and look depending on the time that you watch this man i might have a video on it so just really see what i'm going to really be saying when it comes to why i'm really just kind of okay with it not being there but man one area that the S20 FE has over the S21 is the fact that, look, you do have a micro SD card, which kind of feels strange that it has it over it. Now, the model of the S20 FE I've been using is the 5G model with the Snapdragon 865, which has been great when it comes to the performance and overall efficiency, which from what I've heard of the Exynos 990, it's not been the same. So, boy, although it comes in at a lower price point, Exynos not looking good for the S20 FE, Snapdragon all the way. So in regards to that man for the s21 let's really hope this exynos 2100 really redeems the track record of the exynos 990 but also then one thing to remember the slimmer box of the s21 means you are getting no earphones and most importantly you are not getting a charging brick in there as well which is now a slight level up on the s20 fe which does come with that 15 watt charger which again bear in mind it is not the fastest speed that you're going to be getting on the fe i did the charging test compared to 25 watt to the 15 watt but look it's better than not having a charger anytime when it comes with it right so yeah that is an ace for the s20 fe now when it comes to the camera things again are looking very similar on both models both are packing so some serious hardware when it comes to the price points and where they're sitting with obviously the S21 being ever so slightly newer. You will see some slight differences there when it comes to the hardware. But again, it just depends on if the experience is really gonna be better on the S21, but it hits well. The S21 does have a triple sensor lens combo at the rear and it's working with a large 12 megapixel main sensor, F1.8 aperture, dual pixel autofocus and optical image stabilization with the OIS and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide with an F2.2 aperture with 120 degree field of view and that colossal 64 megapixel sensor which is used for tele zoom at F2.0 and it also enables 8K 24 frames a second recording. When you move over to the selfie, you are getting a 10 megapixel shooter with an F2.2 aperture. Now, Overall, what does look promising is improvements to that 30x space zoom with features such as zoom lock, improvements to low light photos, especially in the night mode, improvements to video stabilization, which is definitely going to be an ace on the S20 FE. And also things like single take mode have been improved with things like director's view. So there's a lot going on with the S21. So very eager to test it when I get the chance. When it comes to the S20 FE, it hits all the notes really well as well. It does have a triple sensor lens combo. It is working with a 12 megapixel ultra wide with 123 degree field of view, a large main 12 megapixel main sensor with an F1.8 aperture, dual pixel autofocus with OIS, and an eight megapixel times three optical zoom with a 32 megapixel selfie. Apart from the 64 megapixel sensor and the 8K recorder that enables, and a few software features on the S21, on paper, they seem very close, but we all know things shift when a live camera test is done so if i do get a chance man you know i'm gonna do it now quick look at the biometric on lock on both and again they're still in a very strange place to me oddly now i've said it i do prefer what both are doing a front facing in display fingerprint scanner and that's what i prefer to have any time of the day but previously samsung's implementation has not definitely been the fastest it's not been the greatest and it's not been the most confidence inspiring and now what they're saying with the s21 the fact that they've increased the scanner by 77 percent i really hope for their sake they fix all those issues because when it comes to the s20 fe it is using an optical in display scanner and rather than the ultrasonic of previous samsung flagships and like i said in my full review man i didn't really find it to be that fast it was quite reliable but it felt kind of slow now price wise in the uk the s21 does start at 769 pounds for 128 gigabytes and then 819 pounds for 256 gigs both models do come with eight gigabytes of ram you compare that to the s20 fe 5g it is 699 pounds for six gigabytes of ram 128 gigabytes of storage or eight gigabytes of ram 256 gigabytes of storage for 749 pounds and if you look at the exynos model avoid 
it does cut £100 off each model. Now, look, my gut instinct tells me unless you are getting the S28 FE for a lot cheaper, even at brand new, then it low-key kind of feels worth it to pay extra for the S21. But on the other hand, things like quality life features on a hardware side, such as having a micro SD card, right? You're actually getting a charger in the box and potentially better battery life because you've got a bigger battery cell in there. I don't blame people for actually looking at S20 FE and thinking that, look, it might be better value. So if you don't care about the size in terms of physically, on a surface level, man, you might still be getting a great enough experience in 2021 on the S20 FE. That is it for me. What do you think of the S21 versus the S20 FE? Do you think the S21 is low key a disguise fan edition phone? Is it giving us a preview of what the S21 FE will be later on down the line? I don't know, man. Let's see how it is. That's it for me, man. Ben from Lover of Tech. If you enjoy videos like this, you know exactly what to do. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you're part of Team TLS, the Tech Lover Squad, so you don't miss any future videos on the channel. I hope you're all safe during this time. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.